Um, Mr. Thompson, I would like to apologize again. Um, the, as you can see, it got the camera to work now. Um, but for whatever reason, it just stopped working last night. So I'm going to try to re-give the speech and I'll submit this one too. Um, <laughs> so. Have you ever been unsure of what it is you're believing, or maybe even why it is you believe it? Have you ever found yourself in a difficult situation where it just seems like you can't get any sleep, you're just so irritated about it, you, it doesn't seem like there's any end to it? Or maybe you feel afraid to witness the times. The church is fracturing, crushed by intellectualism, emotional difficulties, and an unstable foundation. foundation. I know because I've been there. I've been in ministry for many years. I've, I've been in the church my whole life. The past couple years I've dedicated to just studying, trying to witness to people who are who are not as easy to witness as some other people. Witness to as some other people. Uh, so today we're going to talk about um, the importance of the Bible and why we should study it. The church is ignorant of God's words. This is shown in a recent study by Lori Goodstein on September 28th, 2010, uh, which appeared in the New York Times, where she showed uh, that agnostics and atheists scored the highest in a religious knowledge test. Christians are, are increasingly becoming weak, illiterate of truth, uh, feeble witnesses, um, and unknowing of God's very character. According to Eric Reed, who cites the Barna Group on Christianity Today's Leadership Journal, Six out of ten young people will leave the church either permanently or for an extended period of time, starting at the age of 15. Our kids, our siblings, future CEOs and politicians. I'm concerned that the church is not being very set apart and of late. In fact, in her book, um, Sudden Death, written in 1983, American author Rita Mae Brown stated that insanity is doing the same thing over again but expecting different results, and yet that's exactly what the church is doing of today. We're trying to not, to not emphasize studying the Bible for all it's worth, and yet we wonder why we're having such difficulties, why the church isn't growing as fast anymore, why, why it seems like the world is ending when we're in a, when we're a pro when we are in a problem, and when we don't have any foundation. It seems like we're aggravating ourselves, setting others up for failure. Excuse me, ignoring the loss and encouraging spiritual immaturity. It's as if we've forgotten Jesus' words from Matthew 28:18 through 20, uh, in the Great Commission, where he says, "Make their, uh, go therefore and make disciples." And again in John 8:31, where he says, "If you abide in my word." You are truly my disciples. Ignoring scripture causes failure, but emphasizing it positively affects the outcome of tomorrow. The Bible must be our bread of life. It is the knowledge to, to witness, the stability and the strength that we are looking for and that every Christian needs. What I propose as a congregation-wide study of the Bible together, where everybody's doing it together, and where, we ha where there's accountability groups uh, in the different ranks, where everybody's keeping each other in check, and where everybody's emphasizing this. I also uh, propose that the church members get together and uh, brainstorm about different ways that they can emphasize um, Bible study. Uh, their own ideas to kind of make it their own personal... Um, personal thing. For instance, in Love Your God With All Your Mind, written in 1997, Professor J.P. Moreland suggests a church library which would only cost a few hundred dollars, especially if you get donations. That would cost the church even less. Uh, he, he also um, recommends to change the church structure, which, which might be a good idea in some cases. Um, he, he says, for instance, instead of having one uh, pastor, have a board of pastors or, wh or whatever, and then have, um, have them helping other people to become ministers themselves, uh, kind of passing on the, the cloak or whatever you want to say. Um, 
So through restructuring new methods and or age integration, we can become serious about the Bible and emphasize its importance again. Empty people who cannot care, uh, cannot cope, will always downplay the role of Scripture. But what about us? Do we emphasize it? Do we study it? Does it show? When we study, it becomes the comfort when a family member dies. It becomes the... It makes our worship sincere. It, uh, it helps us know what to say when we're witnessing. And through, through the result, it'll help heaven to grow and, and to rejoice. But what's the alternative? No peace in times of trouble, family members abandoning the faith, uh, unreached masses. That doesn't sound like a very good alternative. Let me ask you this. What if Richard Dawkins or President Obama or some other highly influential person was your kid? Would they be impacted... Would they be... Would they impact... Excuse me. Would they impact in a positive way because of your emphasis of the Bible and, and how, how important it is? Or would they just be another person who is just highly influential without the Bible? Let me ask you this. What if, by your faithful Bible study, you save just one person? Would that be worth it? The Bible is the all-sufficient guide for faith and daily living. And with it, we can get through doubts, teach who God is, enable, others to, uh, enable ourselves and others to witness, and confirm... Um, carry and carry us when when nothing else can carry us. So go join with your church, um, uh, join together and study God's word so you it can impact the world. Uh, time will never stand still; it will keep going on. But while it is still day, the church can repair. The Bible says in Psalm one nineteen verse one o five that God's word is a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. So let me ask you this. Without that light, how can anyone see in the dark? Thank you.